What's the one rule that your school or workplace has implemented that absolutely backfired? Viewer edition. Story one. Got a good one. I think this was sophomore or junior year in high school. For context, I graduated in 2016. There was this rule that girls had to wear skirts and shorts that went past our knees, and another where girls could not wear tank tops or spaghetti straps even if it was under a jacket or vest. These rules were only for the girls at the school, and of course, the guys never had as serious of a dress code as the ladies. The jocks of our school, swim team, and football primarily, kept hearing from their lady friends of their girlfriend's complaint about how unfair it was. So they all planned a day in which the guys would come in wearing clothing that was against girls' dress code. Of course, none of them got in trouble. Noticing this, they all protested for the girls who also joined in knowing we had support from the guys. Needless to say, those rules changed. So long as you're not wearing booty shorts, you are good. Guys also got a new rule that day. They also could not wear booty shorts. First off, I'll wear booty shorts if I damn well want to. And second off, good for all of you. That is how you do a nice protest. Things like that don't always work or whatever, but you know what? If a school rule is being unfair and stuff like that, you have a right to speak out against it. And I think in this, uh, in this instance, you did a great job. Story 2. We had a rule where no bags were allowed to be picked up in the event of a fire. Fine, stops people from endangering themselves to get their bag. One teacher thought it meant any student who had a bag during a fire alarm should be sent back to their classroom to leave it there. This led to that teacher attempting to send several entire classes of students who were on their break at the time into a literal burning building that put their bags in a room that was visibly on fire. I have never seen a head teacher come that close to punching someone. How are you a teacher? How are you responsible for the well-being of young lives when you would... D common sense, okay? There's a point where common sense overrides rules. Oh my god. Story three. I have two stories from my school. One, they updated the uniform to include a white polo shirt for classes and a navy shirt for P.E. 80-ish percent of us all turned up wearing the navy shirt to class because it was both comfier and just looked better. School tried to crack down on this and enforce that only white shirts could be worn in class. Cue dozens of parents, largely moms, pointing out that since change rooms weren't made available at lunch, kids would go and play football with their friends in their white shirts, which were a nightmare to clean mud out of. Don't know if they rescinded the rule, but they stopped enforcing it. Two, I guess some kids were caught playing Pokemon on their school laptops or something, but IT put something on them where any program or file, including the word Pokemon, would instantly crash. Cue everyone changing their program slash file names to PKMN. They got wise to this and disabled the ability to right-click on files and thus the rename function, completely forgetting that if you left-click on a program file, wait a second, and then click it again, you can rename it that way. I have a different laptop now, but I still name any Pokemon-related file PKMN. Story 4. My middle school had a no-backpack rule, and they expected students to carry everything or visit your locker before every class period within a five-minute time frame. I had to carry everything so that I wouldn't be late for class. The rule was never reversed, and it's probably part of the reason I have a collapsed disc in my spine, as not long into high school I started having intense back pain that radiates to my legs, knees, and feet. Standing up for more than an hour is beyond painful for me now. Public schools really don't give a crap about students. I get some of this no backpack crap because, unfortunately, school shootings have been a thing, and it's school's ways of trying to protect students, but... This is not how you do this. You figure out a better system and you don't put students in pain lugging around all these massive textbooks and crap. For the love of... Oh my gosh. There's just not going to be any common sense this video, is there? Story 5. Had a ban on water bottles of any kind at school. We were regulated to water fountains only. One kid almost died of heat stroke and dehydration or some crap, and the rule was reversed almost instantly. It's ridiculous how schools where kids go to learn are allowed to commit various HR violations to keep children in check. Story 6. 
I used to work the third shift at Walmart as a janitor. Manager tried to implement a rule that was the front bathrooms were off limits to ease the workload for maintenance staff. The problem was he also told us to report anyone who broke the rule to him. After we had caught one guy from the incoming morning shift doing this several times, he actually asked who gave us the authority to shut it down. My supervisor said rather bluntly that he did. Rule was changed the next day, lol. Still made us feel like crap for having to report our coworker and come to find out the managers were still using the bathroom in the first place and hence why incoming shifts thought they could in fact still use it. To be fair, I believe in leading by example, so if the managers indeed did want that rule put in place, they should have used the back bathrooms like everyone else. Story 7. My school didn't have lockers, so kids kept their backpacks next to their desks. One day, a teacher tripped on one, and while that is unfortunate, the school decided that backpacks were no longer allowed on the floor. So we can hang them from our chairs, we asked? Absolutely not. We had to stack them all in the corner of the class. I don't think the rule lasted a week after teachers got tired of kids getting up and piling up during and after class to get books from their bags. Story 8. I attended a magnet school from 4th through 8th grade. After 5th grade, our principal retired and a new one stepped in the following year. One of her first actions was to get rid of the bell system. Her explanation was that bells were used to keep low-tier employees at factory jobs in line, and as students in a magnet school program, we were much better than that. Rather snobbish looking back on it. The problem that soon surfaced was that she failed to account that it's easy to lose track of time. None of the school clocks were synchronized, and we could still get written up for being tardy to class. Everyone, teachers and students, hated it. The bells were brought back before the first semester was even over. This just rings of a person who they have some good intentions like oh bells that sounds like something that they'd use in a prison or something we don't want that kind of environment but if you don't have anything else in place for it and you just expect people to keep track of the time like that like why are schools so bad at like thinking through the solutions they come up with. They think, like, if this was a chess game, they're thinking half a move ahead. They're picking up the piece and just like, ah, uh, there. Story 9. Minor one for retail work. There was one point where we were expected to carry around our handsets while stacking shelves with a timer app going that marked how long we were taking to unwrap the stacks of merchandise and then get them onto the shop floor. It wasn't an immediate backfire, but when COVID-19 hit the nation with all the panic buying that entailed, going through the process of the app just slowed down the process of getting everything out on the shop floor. The mandatory process was quietly phased out in the weeks that followed. Story 10. Our school had a rule that if the class door was not unlocked 15 minutes after the class begins, the class is canceled, probably if the teacher was sick so we would not have to wait in the hallway. But our French teacher had the habit to slow walk and make us wait. One time he was a little slower than usual and the 15 minute mark came and when he was like two meters from the door. We all said, 15 minute passed, class is canceled, and we all went to the cafeteria. When the security tried to make us go to our class, we took our agenda and said, if you don't follow that rule, then why would we follow any other rule? Next year they changed it. Story 11. A retail job, I had made a rule that employees were not allowed to look at the posted shift schedule while on the clock. The schedule was posted in an employees-only area, and management got the idea that people were wasting time back there and using checking the schedule as an excuse. As it turns out, when you prohibit people from checking the schedule during the day, people forget to check it at all and forget which shifts they're supposed to show up for. I left shortly after, so I don't know if the rule stayed. Sucks to any job that would do crap like that, because you know what? Checking your schedule, it involves work. It has to do with work, and so you should be able to do it while on the clock. Any job that tells you that you should be doing something off the clock that is involved with work, aside from just, you know, transportation getting there and stuff, and even that, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that's ridiculous. Story 12. One time our school wanted to make a rule to ban phones during school time, including breaks. They gave us all a leaflet to give to our parents to vote whether or not to implement the rule. 
It was a go. In our class alone, during the first few months, it was in effect. We damaged the whiteboard, made like three holes in the wall, broke the blinds on at least three windows, broke the circular thing you use to make circles during geometry on the board. Some ink was on several places on the walls. A piece of marshmallow got stuck on the ceiling. A classmate broke the teacher's mug in which she put the markers. Also, one of those markers got destroyed, and a dent was made in the mirror thing in the lights that are supposed to reflect the light to light a larger area. That's what happened when teenagers have 30 minutes free time. Can't go out in the halls unless absolutely necessary due to COVID and can't be on their phones. I've made it well known that I at one point in time wanted to be a teacher, and if I was a teacher, I would not have a problem with uh, my students having their phone out and doing stuff on it when they had free time, if they're done with work or whatever. I, I wouldn't personally care, but I will say I find this concerning that you couldn't have 30 minutes without phones and you resorted to mass destruction. I guess because I grew up where people didn't have phones in school. Like, there was like five of us that had clunky old cell phones that could barely text. And somehow when we had free time, we would read or draw or write or what quietly chat whatever but you're breaking down into anarchy i didn't even have one of these dumb things back then <laughs> it's Ooh. Story 13. Hey, my high school made a similar rule back in 2011. Basically, they also banned backpacks from the classroom. Unfortunately, the school was huge in size, and you only got five minutes between bells to get to your classroom. This meant that if your classes were on the opposite side of the school, you not only had to go to your locker, you pretty much had to run to get to class on time. Since I was lazy, I started taking a large-sized laptop bag to class, since you were allowed large binders. The rule specifically mentioned prohibiting backpacks and not laptop bags. One of my teachers tried to send me to the office four to five times, but each time I'd be sent back to the class because I wasn't technically breaking rules. Eventually, she gave up. I'd like to say that they eventually stopped this rule as it caused excessive tardiness, but it was unfortunately still a rule when I graduated in 2014. Story 14. In middle school, they kept changing the rules so that I had to, most of the time, carry huge stacks of books so much that my arms hurt because we would still walk in massive lines like elementary schoolers, except it was the whole grade half the time rather than just one class that it was the other half. We would take forever to walk to class downstairs, or we would have to wait to come into the room for 15 minutes for some reason. By then, my arms were so tired that they were weak and sore. Most other people ignore the rules, but I was always afraid to do that, so I was stuck being the one weird kid that had arms full of textbooks, because any time I tried to ignore the rule were the times I got yelled at. So yeah, by the way, this was only a few years ago. Story 15. I worked as a KC-135 mechanic when I was in the Air Force. I was deployed to Qatar, where there could be anywhere from 20 to 50 jets on the ground at the time. Some officers had the bright idea that they didn't like us laying around watching movies or playing ping pong when we were not working. Well, the next shift we came into, the TVs and ping pong tables were gone. Needless to say, this did not go over well with the enlisted folk. Within 24 hours, we had almost half the jets broken and the other half needing further maintenance. Almost all airplanes can be broken by mechanical paperwork, even though they are perfectly safe to fly. Just depends on how thorough your inspection is. Well, I guess leadership had to answer why all of a sudden there was significantly less air power in such a short time. Within the week, we had brand new TVs, brand new ping pong tables, dartboards, and a pool table that was obviously stolen from some other unit. Moral of the story, don't bite the hand that feeds you. If you got time to lean, you've got time to clean. I hate that expression so much. Any job that thinks that you should be constantly always working. God forbid if you're on the clock and you take a break to sip some water. They always, oh, you got to be always doing stuff. You can't be lazing around on the clock. If the work's getting done, the work that you're paying them to do is done, chill out. Like the companies that tend to stick around and do the best, for the most part, not all companies, but uh, Companies that treat their employees like people and let them have some freedom. Oi, oi, oi. Any bosses who think this is the way to do stuff are really shooting themselves in the foot. Story 16. It was at my best friend's workplace. We were prohibited from using flashlights. 
Since we had no windows, we had to use electric lights. One day, the lights went off and we heard some gunshots. Luckily, my best friend and I were able to get out, but my best friend's friend was not. P.S. It wasn't my best friend that implemented the rule. It was the original owner of the workplace that made it. The police came, but the intruder was gone. We were rescued by the police. We were under a table, so the intruder couldn't get us. Story 17. In my middle school for P.E., you could either play tag in a field or hang out in a small forest next to the school. I live in Vermont. My school made a rule that throughout the day, if you were caught talking to anyone on your way to class, the teacher would shorten P.E. time, which was everyone's favorite class. So a few of my friends and I realized that the forest was less watched than the field, so me and my friends would just go hang out in the forest, and the boy caught actually playing in the field. Once the teacher caught on, they made it so that we had to be walking slash moving if we chose to go into the forest. This didn't stop us. We would rotate having two people climb trees, and if they saw teachers coming, they would send a text to another one of us who would be sitting slash talking. If the people in the trees were caught, they could just say that they were climbing trees for funsies. Sadly, a crabby teacher pet ratted us out, and the forest was made off limits. Luckily for me, this ended when I was in eighth grade, and I left for high school with all of my friends. So F you, Alyssa. Story 18, not necessarily backfired, but was definitely not the smartest thing. Two years ago in eighth grade, my school started using the fitness gram pacers test, and I mainly forgotten what the tests were, but the two that stick out the most were the running and push-ups. The weird thing was we had to sit down if we did anything wrong, so when we would do push-ups, his everybody just fell down so they wouldn't do the test. With the running, we'd look like we were trying until the last part where we had to cross to the other side of the gym. We didn't do the fitness gram pacer after that. Also, the program was used for only two days before it was shut down. Story 19. When I was in high school, smoking in the bathrooms was a big problem, especially if you didn't like the smell of the smoke. So all the kids decided to designate some of the bathrooms smoking bathrooms and some non-smoking bathrooms. The school admins didn't like this, so they ordered it to stop. So all the bathrooms went back to being smoking bathrooms. Story 20. At my previous job, Night Shift, we were able to listen to music as long as you pay attention to your surroundings and only have one earbud in one of your ears. Managers started noticing that people weren't listening to music but talking on the phone with Bluetooth headphones and earbuds. Managers declared that listening to music was now banned and no one can have any kind of headphones or Bluetooth in your ears or you'll get in trouble. As you can imagine, people made a riot about it and made lots of complaints and manager kind of backpedaled by saying, If you meet certain percentage of production, you can listen to music. The people who weren't listening to music but talking to people on the phone met their marks and spent the majority of the time talking on the phone while the people who listened to music while working didn't make the mark and eventually got fired, including me. Last I heard of the company, they're having a hard time hiring people and keeping people. So, uh, I can relate to this one a bit. I used to work on an assembly line refurbishing cell phones back when they were like, flip phones and stuff like that. And um, when I got there, very shortly after I started working there, they banned music because they thought that music was slowing down production. Uh, Side note, what actually slowed down production was the fact that we weren't getting enough contracts and didn't have enough to do. (sighs) Anyway, so they banned music, so we couldn't listen to any music while we're just on an assembly line, mindlessly doing the same one little task over and over. And so we would just chat with each other. Work was getting done fine, but still it's like, oh, well, we don't, we don't like what we're seeing. No more talking during work. Um, it is the only job that I have ever walked out, like just got up and walked out of, left them in the middle of a shift, And, uh, yeah, they lasted for maybe another three months before the place uh, went under. Story 21. Used to work the breakfast shift at a restaurant, and since I was drive through I was responsible for all the portioning. Unfortunately, due to also having to take orders and helping to make them, I often didn't have time to do it all before the lunch rush hit at 11 a.m., and by then it's too busy to do anything and stuff just didn't get done. I noticed this was a problem and made a deal with my boss. I suggested that she schedule me 7 to 11 every morning. This was actually convenient for me and I didn't mind not having a day off. 
and then she would have another person come in at 11 to take the headset from me. I would then stay overtime to finish any portionings I had left, and leave once they had everything they needed to get them through the day. This was great because I still got nearly 40 hours a week due to the overtime, and the restaurant ran much more smoothly. Then, corporations decided to implement a new rule that part-timers were no longer allowed to work more than 30 hours a week because they didn't want to provide health care. First, we just removed a day from my schedule and I wasn't allowed to stay past 12, but eventually that morphed back into me working regular hours and stuff just didn't get done. Story 22. I had a boss that called me into the office and yelled at me for 10 minutes because I had stayed 15 minutes late trying to finish a task. He told me I was never to work overtime again without being specifically instructed to do so. Result? After the meeting, I set a watch alarm, this was before cell phones, to go off 15 minutes before the end of the workday. When the alarm went off, I immediately stopped what I was doing, stopped any temporary day laborers I was supervising, gathered up all the tools, and took himself and any temp work to the office trailer. Any temp workers would get their work ticket signed, and I punched my time card in the office clock exactly at an eight-hour workday. This continued for the year and a half I stayed at that site working for that boss. He never did figure out that he was the reason I always quit for the day exactly on time and didn't stay one minute later. Any place that is going to get really crabby at you for, like, working any kind of overtime and stuff, then you do not give them one free minute of your time. You give them nothing. And you're always out of there, no matter what they need, until they change that policy. Oh, I'm getting some old memories of old jobs here. Sorry, I'm getting worked up. Story 23. The company I worked for in 2016 tried to do two dumb things. Only one backfired, the second wasn't put in place. The first was enforcing a dress-slash-uniform code for the whole factory, including services that had nothing to do with production or product manipulation. Before trying to do that, only production and the decks had to wear a uniform, and quality wore one anyway. That decision came completely out of the blue. Nobody was complaining about some services not having to wear a uniform. Anyway, the chief of sales, a woman, decided it was the best time to go working on high heels, miniskirt, and a huge cleavage. She got an admonition and direction decided to not enforce dress code after half the factory complained about it. The second was enforcing mandatory breaks. By law, we have to take a 10-minute break after every three hours of work. We were working from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. with just a one-hour break between 12 and 1, so perfectly eight hours a day. And we had half a day off per week to get our 35 hours per week. Thing is, almost nobody took that 10-minute break. Actually, out of the 150 people working in the factory, only five people from the offices did take a break. But too long, like 30 minutes, and most of the time, more than one break a day, so to punish these five people, they wanted to penalize the other 145 other workers and either add 10 minutes to our daily schedule or cut 10 minutes from lunch break. Once again, after many complaints, they backtracked. Anyway, nobody was stupid enough to say we didn't take breaks if we go an inspection. And people were still free to take a small break from time to time if they wanted to. I mean, the coffee machine was never alone. But better be able to drink two or three coffees in the day for a total of six minutes that lose ten minutes every day. The company shut down anyway, but that's another story. Story 24. At my school, they decided to start having the students all take a mandatory class to, quote, make us better citizens. That forced us to go to an assembly split up by that mandatory class and then have us spill things we would not have told our own parents about how we truly felt in a game of cross the line if... And if we refused to go, they would just reschedule us for a different day. This made any of the students picked as leaders to opt out of theirs and just say, I already went to the assembly, so I don't have to go a second time. Alas, attendance dropped a lot during those weeks. Also, I was a good student, and even I thought that all of it was too far. This is like some wild North Korea indoctrination crap here. They, they had a mandatory class to make us better citizens. What the hell? Story 25. When I was in sixth form, a rule was implemented that nobody could consume energy drinks on school grounds because some kid from somewhere in the country drank 20 a day and his heart gave out. So it was decided that we obviously couldn't be trusted. 
So whenever someone drank an energy drink, we would place the can on the support beams of the sixth form area. After they were removed, we started to super glue the cans down. The rule was quickly dropped. Story 26. I had a wretched rule at my hospital stating the night shift had to clock out for lunch. Now, that would be fine and dandy if there were more than two nurses on our med surge floor. When we get a full house, we on nights, we can't clock out because we are needed to help everyone. That made HR mad and demanded we have to clock out for lunch. So I left for my lunch and went to my nearby apartment for lunch. I got called and yelled at about where I was and I stated, you said I have to clock out for lunch or be reprimanded, so that is what I'm doing. The policy was reversed the following day. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.